Hey guys, Levi and Andy here with Grendel Hunter, and we're glad you could make it today because today is big bore day. You bet. Old Leroy has got one of our 16 inch 450 Bushmasters. For those of you who don't know, the 450 Bushmaster was designed to give you big game stopping power in the semi-automatic AR-15 platform. Now today what we're going to be doing, having a little fun, we're going to shoot three different factory loads, the 250 grain uh, FTX from Hornady, as well as Hornady's 245 grain interlock, that's a lead point. Uh, lead soft point. And then we're going to shoot the Remington Core Lock at 260 grain into ballistic gel at 100 yards and see how they do. Now in addition to that we're also going to take our ballistic gel out to 200 yards because the 450 it's not like say the 6.5 Grendel or the 6 millimeter ARC where you've got good hunting capability and pinpoint accuracy out at longer ranges. This is really designed for you know to be a woods gun 100 200 yards. So that's what we're going to kind of limit ourselves to today in our ballistic gel is 100 and 200 yards. So what do you say, Levoy? Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Well, holy penetration, Levi. Yeah. We almost didn't catch that bullet. Yeah, I'll slow down the slow-mo and, you know, kind of look at it frame by frame. You can see that the, the bullet almost makes it out the end. Well, we definitely lost fragments, but that wound cavity starts almost right away, maybe about an inch, goes out to, I don't know, it's about 12 inches. Yeah, and from 12 to 21, 22 inches, there's a lot of large lead and copper fragments out there. Yeah, all hovering about oh, an inch from the, the path of the bullet. I'm gonna be curious to see exactly how much that bullet still weighs. I mean, it looks like it mushroomed quite well. I had a good. I mean, you start with 45 caliber, but it still looks like it expanded pretty good. And it looks still to be pretty good size, but at the same time, I see a lot of fragments. I'm impressed by the amount of penetration that it has, even being a wide bullet that's designed to expand at the lower velocities, more pistol bullet than a rifle bullet design. So it has a lot of drag, being that it's wide and expanded to be even wider. And it's not going super duper fast. So it's interesting that, you know, it's got to just be the amount of energy that that bullet's still carrying at 100 yards allows it to penetrate, you know, 31 and a half inches. I'm really curious to see what it does at 200. Yeah, that will be interesting to see. I mean, the bullet's going to be going a little over 300 feet per second slower at 200 yards, and it's going to have about 550 foot-pounds less energy, so it, it will be interesting to see how it performs. It's still going to have a lot of energy. I think it's still going to do a lot of damage in the first block. I'm just... I don't know, I'm guessing. I think we're going to have less penetration. Well, Levi, what do you think? Well, it's different. That is different. The wound cavity from that FTX was massive. And this one, you really don't see much besides that first couple inches. And then again in the second block. But that, that FTX, you had a massive wound cavity for 13 inches before it kind of started to close down. And this one is a lot different. This one, I, I honestly thought, because this is the, you know, the 245 grain, it's the American white toe load. It's just a lead soft point with a copper jacket. I thought with that exposed lead point, just that flat tip, I thought that thing was going to expand a lot. I thought it was going to mushroom. I thought we'd have, you know, a decent amount of lead fragments through the blocks. But this thing, it, I mean, it tore a little gel at the beginning, and then it just penetrated and penetrated and penetrated until the copper jacket started to fall off. And I think you can see in the video where the copper jacket comes out of the block, it just falls on the table. The lead core went into the dirt berm. It was back in there maybe five, six inches. We dug that out, but it didn't expand at all. No. All it did is lose the copper jacket. It didn't expand or lose any fragments either. I mean, no. there's there's a few copper fragments in, in each block, but there's nothing at all for, for lead fragments. I feel like this didn't really dump its energy into the target. It just zipped right through. Yeah. I think we should put another one in the block and see if it's some kind of anomaly because that's not how that bullet should perform. I, I think we got to put another one in and, and see if it's any different. Hornady says that down to 1,600 feet per second, this bullet should do something, it should expand. Now that's only getting you out to about 140 yards, so that's kind of 
in and of itself may be a touch disappointing, but at 100, it's going over 1,700 feet per second. There's room for air there. That bullet should have done something, and it just didn't. Some pretty similar results here. It wasn't an anomaly. You see the wound cavity in the end of the first block and in the second block is a little bit bigger than, than the first shot. The copper jacket did stay inside the block this time, but very, very similar to the first shot. Yeah, it clearly takes some time before that thing starts to open. You know, in some ways, I think these gel blocks are a bit more dense than a lot of tissue. You think about lung tissue, heart tissue, and the ease of you know cutting that with your knife. I, I think these gel blocks are a little bit more dense than a lot of what's in the chest cavity of an animal, but it's certainly not more dense than, or at least tough than, you know, a deer hides. I don't know if actually putting it into an animal would get that expansion going sooner. You know, those polymer tip bullets, that's that polymer tip, that's one of the purposes of it is to kind of jump start that expansion. Right. And these don't have that. Okay, so what we did, I borrowed one of my son's leather work gloves with, with every intention of giving it back and shot through that. The idea maybe, you know, try to jump start that expansion a touch. And uh, yeah, that didn't work. It performed basically identical. If anything, the little bit of kind of wound cavity that you see in those first couple inches was a touch smaller, but it just penetrated all the way through. And the wound cavity in the second block is smaller than the other two shots were yeah. as well. The copper jacket we found, you know, obviously that, that's opened up every time. The copper jacket hasn't had any, any trouble peeling back. That was just on the berm laying there. The lead slug, the core was just a couple inches into the dirt. But again, it, it didn't expand at all. I don't have any shoulder blades or ribs to stick in this thing. So I think that's about the most we're gonna be able to do with this particular bullet. All right, so here we got the 260 grain Remington core lock. See it performed quite a bit different than the Hornady interlock did. I think it performed how that style bullet's supposed to perform. They're both, you know, just a pretty simple cup and core bullet, soft lead tip. This one dumped its energy in that first block, clearly started to mushroom expand right away, penetrated through the first block dumping energy, and glided, what, another eight inches, seven inches. Got a really, really nice mushroom on that lead. Yeah, it flattened beautifully in the copper jacket stayed with the bullet until right there at the end they separate one large copper fragment rips off at at about three inches and then that one stops around six inches but other than that there's really no fragmenting i don't see any lead in it yeah that's a pretty big benefit not having to pick that stuff out having it go all over the place this one hit Hard. You know, it's a little bit bigger bullet. It's not going as fast out of the muzzle. We got an average muzzle velocity of just over 2,000 feet per second. And out here at 100, we're at about 1,600 feet per second. But it's hitting with 1,462 foot-pounds of energy. And yeah, it, it dumped it into the target. Now the wound cavity itself, compared to that 250 grain FTX, is longer. At 100 yards, what do we get, about 13 inches? Out of the FTX, this one is, you know, that full 16 inches of that first block. It's not quite as wide, maybe not quite as big around. I'm really curious, though, to see the, the slow-mo of the balloon, this thing going in. It is more or less in the center of the block. It should be pretty interesting. I don't know, the benefit of this one compared to the 250 grain FTX is the, you know, less fragmenting. Mm -hmm. At 100 yards, that FTX, it, it had some fragments. There's no doubt about it. It's just amazing the difference between this and what we saw with Hornady's version of this in their interlock. It's a good performing load for the 450.
All right, the 450 Bushmaster 250 grain FTX out at 200 yards into the ballistic gel. Another pretty darn good shot. Touch high, but not bad. No, not bad at all. Wound cavity compared to the 100 yard is fairly similar as far as length. That 100 yard one is quite a bit wider. That 100 yard one, you had about 570 foot pounds more energy at 100 than we do at 200. Yep. I think you see that in the gel. Yep. It was also going several hundred feet per second faster. But still, I mean, it's pretty devastating wound cavity. Yeah, you're still dumping almost 1,200 foot-pounds of energy into this gel. It expends the energy in the first block of gel. Yeah. It doesn't really waste it in the second one. Yeah, it's almost entirely in that first 12 inches, and then it's down to just penetrating. When we get the slow-mo, we're going to see that balloon all in this first block. Yep. Fragmenting, touch different than at 100, Levi. You can see there's copper, a few major chunks, what, maybe... Maybe half a dozen, something like that. Nice, nice flakes where, I mean, it's, where it's peeling back, the copper jacket, those parts that peel back, those came off. But I'm not seeing lead. I mean, 100, didn't we have a, a pretty decent amount of lead? I think there was a good amount of lead at 100 yards. Yeah. You got 26 and a half inches of penetration. Versus, was it about 30 or something, 30, 31 at 100? Yep. Got a nice mushroom on the bullet. It, there was no jacket separation on it. Didn't expand a ton, but still a really nice consistent mushroom around the bullet. Yeah, when we get those two bullets side by side, I think it'll be kind of a cool a cool picture. Yeah. Well, I think it's still plenty deadly here at 200 yards. The challenge would be, with, with the amount it starts to drop after this, you can zero your rifle in a creative way where you don't have too much drop at 200. You aim a little bit below the spine, and squeeze the trigger and you're gonna put it right in the bread basket. But beyond this, it starts to really drop. So I think you could certainly, if you can hit it, you can kill it even further than 200. The problem is gonna be making those shots in the field. You better know exactly the distance and know exactly the drop. I think if you're gonna take a shot much beyond 200, it gets pretty challenging. But at 200, I think it's pretty darn deadly. Well, we know it works at four yards. <laughs> now we just got to keep shooting it every 10 yards to figure out where the... <laughs> I am not going and clicking down a gel <laughs> and moving this thing back 10 yards at a time. No, yeah, well, we, we backed up four yards and shot it there, so basically point blank, and it obviously dumped a lot of energy. The bullet did, the, that lead did expand this time. It wouldn't do it at 100 yards, but it expanded in there in the last... I don't have the measuring tape up here, but... In the last, you know, four inches, three inches of the gel, the bullet comes apart. You can see big chunks of lead and copper. The bullet's completely deformed. You won't even bother trying to measure, I don't think, hardly weight retention or, or expansion. It just is completely deformed this time. I was hoping to see something closer to that, maybe not as dramatic, but closer to that at 100 yards. Yeah, we just didn't even see that lead expand at all. I don't know what the magic number is for velocity, but this was 2,200 feet per second back from four yards, maybe a little more. Worked great there. I don't know, does it need 2,000? Does it need 1,800? 1,750 didn't do it. So in fairness to this Hornady interlock bullet here, we've said enough negative about it, how it didn't really do what, what it was supposed to do, what it's designed to do, at least not at 100 yard velocities. But looking at that in slow-mo when we got back in the office last night, Levi, you could see that balloon and the energy being dumped into it. You could see the ripple waves, like on a lake or on an ocean. And so clearly a shock wave went into that first block of gel. Yep. You didn't see the tearing. You didn't see the bullet expansion. You didn't see some of the things that you, that you do want. But I mean, at the end of the day, you're still talking about a great big projectile hitting something really hard yep. and a lot harder you can go back a couple hundred years and when they're using muzzle loaders kentucky long rifles and they've got 45 50 caliber balls so actually a smaller chunk of lead because it's a ball and it's carrying less energy it's not going as fast 
and obviously they, they made it work. They killed all sorts of stuff. All right, we're not going to spend a ton of time on the ballistics data, but there was a couple things that we wanted to highlight. So we did shoot these, all three loads, through the chronograph, 10 round strings at least. They all had good SDs, they were all pretty accurate. Now different loads and different barrel lengths might give you a different result, so you'd probably be wise to double check this. And if you guys want to pause on the velocity or the energy charts, you feel free. The one we're going to pause on here for a few seconds is the trajectory chart. Something we saw that was pretty interesting with the 450 Bushmaster is the trajectory. Of course, it's a big, heavy bullet that's not going super fast, so it's kind of getting lobbed out there, at least at the longer ranges. And we started playing around with the ballistic calculators to find kind of what maybe the perfect zero where you would have a relatively flat trajectory at ranges that you would actually use one and actually hunt with it. So we found that for most of the loads that we looked at, a 40 yard zero is actually pretty useful. If you zero one of these things at 40 yards, it's going to be zeroed again at about 140 yards. And with that Remington core lock, it was like 120 yards. But between 20 yards and 160, that bullet is never more than about an inch and a half from being zero. So if you zero at 40, you should be pretty much good to go. Just aim and pull the trigger out to about 150, 160 yards. At 200, it's dropping off a little bit more, but if you hold maybe right below the spine, you should drop it right in the bread basket. Well, Leviticus, 450 Bushmaster is a pretty cool caliber. Yeah, it really is. I'm excited to put this to work on some deer here in Wisconsin in a couple months. Thanks to all you guys for showing up on Big Board Day. If you want to see more content like this, make sure to check out our channel, and we'll see you on the next one.